Good morning, my name is Andrew Klaufenstein. I am a research engineer with the Department of Food, Agriculture and Biological Engineering. And I'm going to talk today about our E-Field study in high, with high speed corn planting for 2020. We have been doing this study since 2016. When we first started out looking at this study, we were trying to find out what the power and speed limitations were with respect to emergence in corn yield. Over the last five years, we've been really impressed with the results that we have received. And we're going to talk a little bit further about those today. So the study design for 2020, we had a Case IH 500 Steiger row track in conjunction with a Case IH 2150 24 row 30 inch early riser planter. This is the first year that we've had a 60 foot planter. So we were excited to see what the capacity was of this outfit. The planner was equipped with precision planning's complete suite of tools. We had clean sweep, V-set, V-drive, speed tube, delta force, and we were monitoring all this and controlling it with a Gen 3 2020 monitor. On the Case IH side, we were equipped with wing down force to keep the planner level and toolbar level and spread out the weight throughout the uh, field. And we had the two stage closing system on the rear that is a set point from the cab. We also equipped this planner with a set of SUSI tracks to help with flotation and pinch row compaction throughout all our studies in 2020. We used our OSU plots app to lay out our complete randomized block design for execution during the planting stage. So this field was in South Central Ohio um, just outside of South Bloomfield, Ohio, off US 23 in a river bottom. We have been in this field with high speed studies on a steady rotation since 2016. This was the site for our first study, and we continue to use this field for some of our high speed plots. So, when we look at this field, it is relatively flat. We typically plant, if we look at my cursor here, we typically plant just outside of where this roadway is going towards the east. We have roughly five to six feet of rise and fall, but we're overall very, very flat. And we do have a waterway, a natural waterway that runs through this field. And that can be seen here with the elevation. When we look at the soils in this field, we're overall very consistent and Although this is a U.S. Sergos soil map, we're actually going to look at some smart farmer data to help us better understand what that field looks like. So this is our range of organic matter throughout the field. This field has been no-till since uh, the lifetime of the field that we've been running in it. We would do some light vertical tillage to prepare the field, but no heavy tillage. As this is river bottom, you can see the river as it runs around the field. And we're seeing ranges of organic matter from two to three and a half percent consistently year to year. As this is being a no-till field, uh, we do uh, see all our traffic events. So we are very aware of some of our previous events and how the field is treated uh, with respect to harvest. We do have some as you can see, there are some standard paths that are used for grain cart and traffic throughout the growing season. This field, when it is sprayed, is sprayed perpendicular to planting. So that is, if you can see this uh, sprayer tracks, we would be planting north and south and spraying more on an east and west pattern. So when we look at planter performance, we were very, very pleased with what we were able to accomplish. As you can see here, this is our singulation map for 2020. You cannot pull out any of the treatments from our speed. So our operating speeds were five, seven and a half, 10 and 12 and a half miles per hour. And if we would see differences in that, that would be indicated by the legend below. But as we can see, very consistent overall planting. So I always like to show a couple videos here just so we know what is going on with the row unit. This is a video that we've had in the past, but very, very similar conditions. Um, this year, 
that we had a little bit better uh, seed bed prep. So this is a very cloddy soil, but overall, this is the right of the row unit at five mile an hour. So we, we look at the range of motion. We, we have a very good control of the range of motion and that is due to our hydraulic delta force and our down force. So we, we keep that right consistent and we may maintain overall seed depth. So when we start talking about increasing speed, I'd like to show in the next video. And this is a video of high, high speed planting when we are greater than speeds of 12 and a half miles an hour. What I want you to notice is the peak to peak oscillations or movement of the row unit. The row unit continues to ride in that same motion. All we are doing is changing that frequency so it's faster. We do a really good job of maintaining seed depth and that is um, all to deal with that hydraulic downforce. When we look at overall field observations and understanding planning capacity, we have theoretical planning capacity and we have what is adjusted field capacity. And when we look at that field adjusted field capacity, that's all gonna depend on a farmer's operation. And that depends on how the field is laid out. If it is more of a square field, rolling field, if you have lots of waterways, or if you have a lot of downtime because you're putting on a lot of liquid products. So if you are putting on in furrow or starter, obviously those rates are going to depend how quickly you have to fill the planter. So when we look at those, we ask, tend to estimate for, this is for a 40 foot planter, uh, roughly 19 acres per hour at five mile an hour. When we start looking at 10 miles an hour, we're, we're roughly looking at 38 acres an hour. Now, not always is this a direct correlation where we would double our capacity, as when we double our capacity, we also have to take into account filling that planter more frequently and having enough bandwidth to bring that fertilizer and that seed to the planter. So field observations for 2020, the stand counts, as we will show those results here in a few slides, show little difference between speeds but the highest stand count area did result in the highest yield. Uniform emergence allowed the crop to get off a good start thanks to hydraulic downforce keeping the planting depth consistent. We did have a wet spring, but we turned into a very dry summer. Growing conditions were favorable, but the yield limiting factor in the field was planting date as well as lack of moisture. But we had very little disease from 2020. When we look at that throughout the growing season. This is the, the weather map. We did plant this in, in the first week of June. So from June to when we harvested in uh, November, we, we had very little rain. Uh, we had a single digits amount of rain, but yet we did have a decent yield. So results for 2020, when we look at that emergence, we go from roughly 25,000, uh, 396 or 24,000 all the way up to 25,542. So very, very tight range on yield or on emergence, excuse me. And then when we look at yield, we did not have any significant difference from five to 12. And if we look at that, our highest yielding, which was at 192, did have the most plants emerge from planting. So when we talk about conclusions for 2020 and over the last few years, we continue to see no significant difference from different speeds and limitations on yield. Uh, three necessary components to make this happen, and we have to really uh, have hydraulic downforce and electric drive meters and well as speed tubes or some sort of high speed seed delivery. We have to make sure we set our hydraulic hydraulic downforce correctly for the speeds that we are traveling. And as we continue to look at this in several different locations, we see an advantage of planting faster, but this is always going to depend on a grower and field by field basis. We are not advocating for planting owl fields at 12 and a half mile an hour, but 
your speed might be able to have an increase of 30 to 40 percent just depending on what the field conditions are like when you go to that field. Planting speed obviously allows to cover more acres and as we have seen the shrinking of our weather window, we continue to see the need to get more acres planted in a short amount of time. So we wanna thank uh, Bex Hybrids Precision Planning, Case and Susie Track for their continued support on this project. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at my email, claufensteinder34 and I will be able to answer any questions. Thanks and have a great day.